This is I am number four. Which needs a little bit of cleaning. But um, this has a 5800X in it with a 3060 Ti. It's been my gaming rig, uh, was a streaming, uh, is a streaming rig, was my editing rig and all that stuff for a while. But instead of just cleaning it out, I've been hesitant to pull the trigger on something. Let me explain. This is Cool Blue. Uh, the likely replacement for IM number four, which was the 5800X build, uh, there's only one problem. Yeah, 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 that, that's, that's the one. That's my hesitation. That's what's keeping me from swapping things out because this has done a masterful job as an editing rig. But I don't know how well it's going to be as my everyday game, stream, etc. type day. I mean, I know it'll do well in daily stuff, but gaming and streaming and all that, we do know the Arc GPUs had more than their fair share of drivers when they came out. Uh, it's been a little over a year. How are they now? And can I finally make the swap? This has an i7-12700KF in it. It is a motherboard that will also take a 13th and 14th gen if I want to do that, but that 12700 is more than enough for what I need. Uh, Air-cooled instead of water-cooled. And, yeah, the RK750. So today, we're going to go back and find out if some of the problems that plagued that A750 and the Arc Intel GPUs before are still giving them a problem a year later or can I finally go ahead and make this switch like I want to? So like I was saying I'm mainly concentrating on the Intel Arc A750 for this because I do like the way that's set up doing my editing it is very quick uh, probably a good I don't know, one and a half times faster than just using the CPU. With a free version of DaVinci Resolve, uh, I'm not using the NVEG encoder, so it doesn't really do me any, you know, any different if I'm using an, um, an NVIDIA or an AMD graphics card, but that AV1 encoder really does uh, step things up a little bit. Now from AMD series uh, 6700 and up, the new 4000 series GPUs from NVIDIA and all of the ARC and what would be the Battle Mage, they're all going to have AV1 encoders. So they will all have this, but for the time being, that's the only one I have that does have an AV1 encoder. The other, I have a couple other GPUs that have a decoder, but yeah, uh, if I'm using DaVinci Resolve, it's not going to do me a whole lot of good. Uh, Otherwise, I mean, basically what I would have to be doing, the free version will let me encode an H.264 off of the CPU. So I, I will probably still gain a little bit if I go with the 12700 over the 5800X. In fact, I'm sure I probably will. But the fact still remains, I would still end up having to swap these systems out. Now, I could opt to put the RTX 3060 Ti in that build, but I would much rather just, since that's built and working and being fine, functioning fine, wanted to move the whole thing over, swap some of the drives, get everything back up and running with the minimum of, uh, the minimum of downtime, wear and tear, frustration, all those things. But anybody that knows that's ever swapped a system before, know there's bound to be fr some frustration. In any case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to test the RK750 a little over a year after it came out just to see if it's worth swapping over now. The main reason it's my editing rig and not my main rig is because I had issues with drivers. Uh, that's a well-known fact that it, it, especially with older drivers, DX9, DX11 and all that stuff, there were some big problems. But I wasn't expecting some of these results. Uh, for instance, we, I took a look at a couple of games and I just, I just hit on a smattering of them. But even when I looked at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in DX12, uh, the numbers for 1440 actually improved, and 1080p stayed the same. With Borderlands 3, which was one of my sticking points before, Borderlands 3 running in DX12 ran great. And those numbers are about the same across the board, so I didn't put them on here. But in DX11, they actually went back and improved the 1440 numbers by quite a bit, and it's a huge improvement. And these numbers match up almost exactly with the DX12 numbers. So, um, yeah, DX12 is still just a shade faster, but the DX11 numbers do now look really, really good on Borderlands 3, which was a big surprise for me. But there was one that really stood out in all the testing I did, because it did great in DX12, it, it did okay in some other things, and we'll talk about CS2 
CSGO or CS2 in just a moment here. That used to run on DX9, now runs on DX11. But one of the games that really was a thorn in my side and was an example of really um, does not work very well, and part of it still does not work well, World War Z. Now, this is a game that operates or uses the DX11 API and also can use Vulkan. However, this GPU does not see the Vulkan. It won't let me swap from DX11 to Vulkan. I'm not quite sure why that is. I still haven't investigated that. But what I did do is I did go ahead and test DX11. Now, these, this used to cap out in the mid-70s, and it was horrible. It had a lot of artifacting. It had a lot of... Uh, glitches and it was just the, the test was I mean the game was unplayable the benchmark test was unwatchable sometimes it was just really really bad wow what a freaking difference um, we're talking about 1080p low being almost three times better and very smooth this was much much better a much better experience overall and very very smooth during the testing of this and I was not expecting that I was expecting a little bit of an improvement but this is totally night and day so they seem to have gone back and not only still worked on some of these older APIs and some of these older interfaces, but improved them. Not just make sure they work okay, but actually done some huge improvements, even to ones that were already working well. Like Shadow of the Tomb Raider in DX12, you wouldn't expect that to be any better, but still, they went back and made some improvements. Borderlands 3 was passable, wasn't great, it was passable, but they still made improvements on the DX, DX11 side to make it match DX12 makes me pretty happy about that and then of course a game like this now I didn't have much of a problem before when I was running CS2 uh, I did do a little bit of testing with the original CSGO and it was okay it was passable there was a lot of glitches a lot of problems in the very beginning but they put out some patches and the very early on they, they corrected some of that stuff then of course Counter-Strike got an upgrade to CS2 and that was okay. Now this still, after a little bit of, you know, I think November or so was when they upgraded these drivers and I was getting about 150 frames per second. That's even increased. Now I'm working on about, I'm close to 170 frames per second as an average. Uh, and it was very, very smooth, very playable. Not very good at this game still, but it was very smooth, very playable. And I was really happy with the difference that I was seeing. So is, is this the end-all, be-all now? I, um, I have to say that if, if, they keep, if they've kept marinating these drivers, and they've kept working on these drivers, and they've kept improving it, it reminds me very much of something like Hello Games with the game, the game No Man's Sky, where they've continually tried to improve and update and just make it a better product overall without bragging about it, without telling us, without trying to charge us extra, without saying, oh, you know, whatever. They've just quietly continued behind the scenes to make things better than, than I would have thought they had a right to make them. And that pleases me pretty much. That makes me very, very happy. So whereas a year ago, or even in November, the last time I did a full run of these benchmarks, and I think I might have done it one other time since then, but in November I did a full suite of these, um, can I recommend this now? more than I would have in November when I said, hey, it's a great rendering card? My answer is yes. I mean, I still need to test it with streaming. I still need to make sure that it holds up to streaming, and I'll do that over the next week or so. But as far as just raw gaming and keeping up with stuff and the productivity, we already know that it can encode and decode pretty well. We, we've shown that before on the channel. The A380 also keeps up with that. We're not even going to talk about the A380's performance with older car with the older hardware, and this is pretty much the same thing. But that 12700K is a fairly recent generation, and this this video card does really really well. Um, is it time for me to go ahead and swap this over? I think yeah. Within the next couple of weeks, I'll be swapping this over, and my new setup, my everyday setup, will become cool blue, and I am number four. Will get. Um, I don't want to say pushed off, but it might get part of it recycled, part of it reused, might get a little bit retired. I don't know. Uh, I still have a hard time partying with Son of Fred over there on a the shelf um, because, yeah, I still play around with that computer. So it's hard for once I've been using a computer for so long, it's hard for me to retire that computer. So I'm sure I'll keep it in some way. Um, but yeah, I think it might be time to go ahead and that, that blue monstrosity you see over there behind me, over my shoulder might make it over here to be the one I'm recording on, streaming, gaming, and all that stuff, and be my everyday machine. 
I, I would say with maybe 90% confidence that yes, I would recommend the ARC GPUs or ARC graphics cards from Intel now. Whereas I was really shaky about recommending that before. I think not only do these render well, they also play games well, they also do productivity well. And um, Intel has just really kept baking these drivers and making, making the drivers better. And um, it's turned into quite a decent card, especially for the price. You can still find these for 200 bucks or less. I used one for less than that. Brand new one for around 200 um, And it puts the performance, I'd say the performance is somewhere right around maybe AMD's offering of that RX, uh, RX 6600 or 6600 XT, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, it's not going to blow the doors off of anything, but it's a solid card. And the 770 is even better. Now, I did recently see that another channel, uh, Hardware Unboxed, is going to give them a shout out. They did a full slate of testing on the A770 that I have to go back and completely and finish watching that. But um, as far as my testing with the A750, I'm going to say I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, I'm really, really going to say I'm happy with it. And for 200 bucks, yeah, it's a definite pickup. I, I would probably, if you're looking for the AV1 encoder, swing toward this one. Otherwise, it's a toss-up between the 6600 and this. I, I really think either one of those cards will do just as well. And if you really have to swing for the NVIDIA fences, then, uh, yeah, swing appropriately. Maybe, yeah, still, I would still look at maybe a 3060 or maybe a, a 4060 or something in that neighborhood. Uh, I know it might be a little bit more, but the, uh, that would still be the next most solid card that's going to be, uh, that, that I think, would do the best job. Um, yeah, so that's where we stand. In favor of it, like it. We'll end up moving it over to be my primary computer to do all my streaming and my editing and my gaming and all that stuff, and I'm not going to be swapping back and forth between two computers anymore. Wow, that's going to be hard to get used to for me. Anyway, if you got some out of the video or you learned something or you just like, oh, I didn't know that, go ahead and throw a thumbs up on it for me. Go ahead and throw a like. Uh, I'm very, very appreciated. Um, still trying to hit... 1500 subscribers i would like to do it in the next probably two months or so i would love to be able to do it before the holidays get here because i really want to make a push um, to go over the top for the holidays so um if you're not already subscribed please do uh, i'm also splitting some things up like um one of the next videos is going to be on a stream deck um those videos will be split up into the my gaming channel so anything that has to do with gaming or streaming or live stream or anything like that will be split up onto that channel. This is just going to be PCs and all that stuff. So uh, stay tuned here for all the PC upgrades and stuff like the yard sale com computers and all that. But if you're looking for other things, microphones, headsets, uh, any cameras, uh, st stream deck or anything like that, that's going to be on the other channel. And it will be linked below as well. So anyway, yeah, that's all I got this time. Uh, if you don't do any of that, if you don't follow me on the other socials or anything, which I would appreciate if you did, but if you don't follow me on all the socials or or anything like that, or watch any of the other videos, just do me one other favor. Uh, really, really simple favor, and I ask everybody to do it all the time, but I really, really mean it. And that's just be good to each other. Be nice, be kind. Say hi, hello, good morning, hold the door open, wave something, smile. It doesn't cost anything at all to be kind to somebody, and you would be surprised how big of an impact you might be able to have on somebody's day. So please do that. You know, do it. If don't do it for me, do it for you. Uh, do it for the person that you're like holding the door open for or smiling to. You know, maybe they do it to you, and it makes your day. You just never know, right? So anyway, that is all I have for this time. So until I get myself into something I got no business getting into, like trying to figure out how to finish upgrading three different Dell Optiplexes and the whole boatload of yard sale finds and unnecessary RGB and we're going to stop it there. <laughs> There's a lot going on, folks. We'll just keep at it and we'll uh, we'll post them as they get done, okay? So that's it. So until I get something myself into something I got no business getting into, I'll see you later. <laughs>